see. What are we thinking from the bands here? We do see LeBlanc being taken out. We saw Soaz running LeBlanc top lane. Not something any of us were expecting, and Cassidy, of course, being banned out. Yeah, instantly two assassin bands versus Alex. We talked about how if he's not playing the assassin types, he's not having the same impact in the early game. Copenhagen Wolves knows this. They're going to ban him out. Jinx has the last one. Genji has been playing seven games of Jinx and one game of Lucian. And he's won six of his Jinx games. So it's a very smart one. Get him a little bit out of his comfort zone. Maybe he'll pick a Lucian for Forgiven, who loves to play him. Well, we do see, of course, the Lee's taken away as well. We do see Aranea playing that last time around. Lee Sin being taken out as well. So first pick, Ooh. what will it be? Will it be that Kale? I mean, this is an interesting pick straight away. Kaltard's done very well on Kale already in the LCS. He's been doing very well, and Kale itself has been such a strong pick overall. We normally have it banned away, but this time, due to Gambit focusing so hard on banning out Amazing and maybe giving their edge to Diamond procs, the kill is left open. If they early pick this one, they will give Lucian though to Genji if he decides to pick it up, and then they have to go with the Kaelin. It's actually not a bad trade, so I think for Komei Wolves, this is the best move. But of course, we have seen Alexis playing Zed to great effect last week. Will he counter with that? I mean, the intervention is a good block to that. Kale is more or less the direct counter to Zed. So yeah. right here, they put the gamut in the, you know, the decision making of saying, do we want this assassin or not, even though it's not optimal? Or do we just want to go with something safe? Orianna normally works very well versus the Kale. So right now, Covenant Wolves is more or less baiting Gambit into, you know, we want you to pick this Orianna and we want to have Alex not doing too much early game. We do have to touch on one thing though. All supports are open. We normally have at least one of them banned away. So you can pretty much take whatever you want. If you take the fresh, is the counter pick to Leona? So you more or less put Covenant Wolves now on, on something like an Annie. So maybe they're going to force him onto Annie, maybe they have something in mind. Ordinarily it would be Chompers from Jinx to uh, lock in the stun there, but instead they're not going to be available. Does mean that Kaelin could be available, not sure whether he's going to go for that at the moment. I think it's two supports. <laughs> Whoa! This okay. right here. You know about this. I know this pick. High chance we're going to see a Lulu mid lane. The reason it's very strong mid is the fact that your scalings are so good. Your W scales with AP so you move faster. And your Q, when you hit the slow, scales also with AP, so you slow for more. It's more or less like an AP Cillian right here. So much mobility and utility giving to the team, and you have so much tower push potential. The issue about Lula, though, in a straight up, you know, 5v5, uh, 5v5, he doesn't bring too much damage to the table, and they kind of need to kite it out or make sure they avoid these, these bad fights. And of course, League of Legends connoisseurs will know that we did see Lulu at the International Wildcard Tournament. It was the Australian team, and I can't think the name of the guy in the mid lane. He plays all sorts of wild stuff. Pulled it out there. That was a Gamescom that qualifies to get to Season 2. Of course, we saw Gaming Gear EU making it for that one. As it is, it's been locked in potentially for the mid lane. Seeing what Copenhagen Wolves go with here. Well, Lucian, no surprise for Forgiven. And alongside him, Annie. And I'm actually a little bit surprised they picked the Lulu so early, because it did give now they are the Lucian for Forgiven. He loves to play it. He's been spamming it pretty much all the time. And it means now Genji has to pick something new that we haven't seen him play, at least in this LCS before. Possibly the reason they do early pick Lulu is because Unlimited played it in the past together with Kale. It was this counter engage combo with double ultimate to save whoever they went for. So they didn't want to take the chance of him picking it up. Well, is Genji going to fall back on an old favorite? Will it be? That Varus, of course, the piercing arrows. Basically, he plays the caster champions, and it fits so well with him before. We also see Evelyn being locked in, and again, we saw how well Diamond played that last week. Yeah, Diamond loves this Evelyn. That's also why they're banning away these champions that can deal with Evelyn early game if they do catch you out. Now, instead, he can pretty much roam around like he wants and set up, try and set up kills and put a lot of pressure on the lanes. The way you deal with Evelyn early game is your lane swap. So you force it to either defend one lane or, you know, come and try and do the 3v1 push in the other one so you have full vision on her. And Copenhagen Wolves as a team, they love to the lane swap. They always talk about how the lane swaps are good, the rotation they do afterwards are good. So I actually think this fits them really well. Varus, low mobility champion versus something like a Kale that can get to you, burst you down, and also the tables from Manny that can hit him straight in the face. Yeah, but of course the Maybe the poke, I mean, he is Genja, a player that will sit very far back in all fights, not just the team fights, not just the lane phase, mm -hmm. just anyway, he will sit back with that piercing arrow. Works out well for him, of course. It's high skill shots in that one. Forgiven Unlimited, while well, they're gonna be picking for the top lane and the jungle here. So what are we gonna see amazing pulling out? What are we seeing in that top lane? Could it be the Wukong we've seen in North America already? It can be a jungle Wukong right here, or we can have a young buck playing it in the top lane. And when you play, if you do play Wukong top and you lane swap with it, you're actually very strong. It is going to be the jungle Wukong though if he locks in his Renekton. And with Renekton, you kind of take the safe route, you don't want to risk getting counterpicked by anything, and you have all the early game pressure. 
Wukong jungle though, I really like this one, especially because your ganks are all right before level 6, but once you hit the level 6 mark, you're so strong. Well, we're waiting for Edward to make the final choice for Darien. Last time, it was Warwick. He played a wolf against the wolves. Yes, to disrespect them. To disrespect them, as according to the wolves. But of course, Wu Kongli and Renekton. Renekton being Youngbuck's champion of choice from long ago. What will he counter with it? I have to touch on one thing, though, before we talk, uh, talk about the Edward pick. Look at all the jumps Copenhagen Wolves has versus an AD carry without any mobility. How on earth is he going to survive team fights when you have Wukong stealthing in, jumping to you, popping his ultimate, you have double dash on Renekton, and you have the flash tables from Annie. I don't really see Gendy having much impact in these team fights unless Gambit is like, you know, getting really far ahead early or kiting really well. Still waiting for that final choice. Pretty sure it's not going to be the Heimerdinger. Pretty sure it's not going to be the Teemo, although Teemo has been doing very well. It's going to be the Trundle in the top lane. After all that. All that, we end up with, you know, a favorite of, of uh, Darian. It's a very good pick versus Renekton. As soon as you get your player to Rune King, you can start really dueling him, pressuring him out of the lane. He will have a few issues in the start, though, because Renekton has the edge before, you know, they really start getting items. Well, I mean, we just saw Wicked playing very well up against Soaz, of course. So what do we make of these two team comps? He talked about the mobility, really, that Copenhagen Wolves has over what Gambit offers. Yeah, so what I really, really think is scary for Gambit at this moment is the utility and also the burst damage Copenhagen Wolves has once a fight starts. Look at the targets from Gambit. There's only one tanky member, that's Trondo. Evelyn is not building tanks. She goes for, you know, the Blade of the Rune King, this kind of route, before she actually gets anything. So she will get bursted instantly in the fights. And they have to rely on both Alex hitting the right ultimates, the right slows to kite, and also on the fact that Genja, he needs to stay back. He needs to stay safe. Otherwise, Copenhagen Wolves will collapse on him and just destroy him. He needs to land that chain of corruption when they do come in at him as well. That's going to be a big, important spell. Well, as the champions load into the rift, let's see who you voted for as the favorite to win this match. Looking at the numbers, well, it's a biggie again. 90% have gone with Gambit Gaming. No surprises there, that's for sure. You can always vote for your favorite teams online, but if you want to cheer them on in person during a match, join us here in Cologne. Just head up to lolesports.com, which you're already going to be on watching this, and click on Tickets for all the details. And as the game loads in, what, what are your predictions? I mean, 90% for Gambit. No surprises there because, you know, they are favorites, and actually they would go joint top if they win this. Judging from the combos, completely 50-50. Gambit, I feel, is the better team compared to Copenhagen Wolves, but Copenhagen Wolves combo versus, you know, the lineup on, on Gambit's side right here is so strong. Lack of mobility on Gambit can be punished very well, and also the lane matchups for Copenhagen Wolves are, you know, they're, they're pretty safe. The, the Annie Lucian bot lane, that's no issue right there. You're not exactly going to lose the lane, and I haven't seen a Varus in forever. So it's going to be very interesting to see how much he can actually do versus his Lucian. I think we've probably not seen Avara since last time Genja played it. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Which is when he was actually going for the tier of the goddess. We'll see if he goes back. And to that, that was horrible. <laughs> Don't remind me about <laughs> yeah. that time. I remember watching that with many, many players in the play lounge thinking, what is he doing right now? But Genja does what he likes, as do the rest of Gambit. And generally, well, it works out because they've won a lot of trophies. I actually recall Gambit banning away the virus themselves just to make sure he didn't get the virus pick, at least from Alex in interviews. That shows how bad the tier build was. So, as it is, everybody standing around looking at each other down that river line. Never really seen too much engages, but I am really interested to see how this middle lane matchup is going to go. Yeah, I mean, Lulu is a lane bully, especially now when he's starting with the Thorns ring, so he has a lot of early game damage. You can also shove the, shove the wave. Kale, on the other hand, is very good at shoving back, so I don't expect to see too much action, more farm-wise. And I'm not really sure how Gang is going to work with the Evelyn coming in. You don't really provide any hard CC, and you don't really have too much early game damage. If Alex, though, goes with the Korean style of build, it's going to be something like an Athens into a Lich Bane, or Athens into Death Cap and Lich Bane, and you have a lot of focus on, you know, poking turrets and getting you some starting damage. Edward swinging his chain. We saw his Indiana Jones-like styles lashing in on Fnatic last week. It worked out very well for him, so no surprise that he went with that as one of the first picks for Gambit. As it stands, we are having a rotation here. Looks like it's going to be Forgiven Unlimited heading towards the top against Darien. And this was the lane swap we talked about in Champ Select. Copenhagen was the love to do it. They trust so much in their own lane swap abilities. So for them, swapping up here, giving them full vision of Diamond, or at least trying to force Diamond out in the lane where he can only defend, 
is pretty smart because Evelyn, in a 2v2 scenario, bot lane, she won't really be able to do much. Oh, amazing starting off on the blue buff. Not using the smite there, by the way. Notice that in the start. So we'll see whether he managed to try and go for an invade at the moment. It looks like he's going his standard route, so it's a little surprising he didn't use that smite early on. He got such a good uh, pull from this bot lane that he didn't really have to, to use it. He can go straight for his red now, pick it up, and then just do a, new, a normal clear from there. So as these lane matchups do switch around, we'll keep our eye on what they do. Wukong is a champion that works very well from the jungle, but it's Darien that's getting focused on this top lane. Stun not quite landing out there, but Flames, you can see the damage on Darien. But Darien's one of those players that just doesn't mind this sort of matchup. He will just sit and farm, sit on his turret. He's not too bothered about it, whereas we see Youngbuck already backing off. Yeah, and Darien has his teleport, so if he should go too low, he can recall, teleport back in lane and not lose too much. So I actually expect him to get quite a lot of farm. Trundle is very good at last hitting, like we just saw under the turret, with his Q, picking up, you know, the CS he needs, and also staying in XP range. We'll see whether Diamond decides to come and help. Doesn't look like he is. He's heading back off. He's got that double buff. We'll see if he starts sitting on that middle lane as well. Because remember how much they camped on Peke in the Fnatic game. Yeah, they really want to shut down Peke there. But one thing we have to touch on with both junglers, they really want the level 6 before they do the real ganks, before they start the real fights. So for them right now, just farming it away or trying to defend the turret is pretty much the normal way, to, normal route to go, to go for both of them. Darien getting stunned up heavily on the tower, has to force the flash this time around. Now he will have to back off. That's some good damage from the walls. And it was actually smart enough by Darien. Yes, he had to blow his flash, but he got some of the CS he needed. And we see Diamond now closing in on Carthorne in the mid lane. Looking to go for a gank here. Will he head off towards him? He's well away. He's going to have to force that flash into good slow. Glitterlands from Alex, but he's not going for it. And he, Diamond is still lingering there. He's got the double buff on him. But Kautars may be sensing something's up here. Again, there's no hard CC from Lulu. She needs to land a full combo to actually get the slow in. And then Evelyn can come in and they can maybe force a flash. Kill potential is not there yet. If, however, they do manage to take the flash away, they put a lot of pressure on Kautars. Well, they have no vision of that, Evelyn. Not seen him in a long time around the jungle, so no surprise. But Diamond sneaks around unseen, I believe, there on Kelso. Completely unseen, yes. He's just going to keep farming. Amazing is doing the same. Taking his uh, jungle camps and then maybe going back to bot lane to defend. The flash blown top lane from Darien, unless Covering Wolves actually goes up to dive him, it won't really change much. He got some of the CS he needed and some of the XP, and he just TP'd back in the lane. So he's actually level 4 already to the level 3 of the Necton. And he came back with that regrowth pendant, gave himself some more health regen along with those pots, which you can see he's chugging through. Amazing. Warding out that death, which trying to get vision of Diamond to catch him going down that river as it stands. Is farming back and forth. So let's check and look at those farming figures. Forgiven at the moment, heading off Genja. No surprise there, Lucian up against a virus, although they're in different lanes, of course, but winning out in that CS battle. Yeah, he's winning it uh, right now, and that's actually what they need. I'm very surprised by Diamond using so much focus in the mid lane. Clearly, they, they don't even mind all the tower damage they're taking top lane right now, so Diamond just wants to set something up in the mid. Well, he's very far forward. Now he's just spotted him, realized has to get that speed buff, heals himself from just backs away from that one so doesn't manage to land it and again still not let hit still not yet hit level six he hasn't hit, hit the level six mark is kind of what he needs for the for the real gangs and right now Kauta is just out farming alex he keeps shoving him down to the turret he's not even scared of the gang and the bottom young but still only level four but he's up against two level fours in lane Top lane, we do see Darren already hit five as well. So, of course, that does mean of course, when Youngbuck had to back off a little bit early. Darren, no problems at all in this top lane anymore. He is just farming out quite happily. And he has so much health regen right now that even though he does get poked, he can just heal it back up with health regen and his passive giving him, you know, every time he kills a minion, he gets some uh, some uh, some life back. Youngbuck can't really have the same set for him. He seems to be struggling a little bit here as Renekton. And look at Edward winding it up, ready to just keep him at bay. Yeah, he might be struggling HP-wise. But he's actually holding his tower really well. It has barely been touched, also due to amazing coming down defending before. He won't be able to help when this wave hits in because he has to recall now. You do see Gambit with freezing the lane off here as well, keeping Youngbook starved from that CS, whereas the top lane, of course, they're trying to shove it as quick as possible into that tower. And it's smart by Copenhagen and Wolves, actually, because the tower is so much lower than the bot one, so they can take it and rotate down bot and not lose any turrets for this lane swap. At the same time, Evelyn hasn't been able to do much in the early game. He is level 6 now, though, and closing in on the top lane. And they haven't hit 6 either, so Tib is not available should they require all the culling. Whereas Darwin, you do see at level 6, will be able to steal away those stats, and it looks like they may well go for something here. 
And notice, the, oh, he's going in for the kill. He's going to go in towards Unlimited. That's going to be the focus target. Evelyn should have the damage to finish him off there. Has to force the flash, but look at Darian. He's just coming through. They're trying to give it to him. It will be Evelyn that takes it. Now Forgiven's going to be focused on there. Is it going to be enough? Forces the flash out of Forgiven as well. We did see Wukong was coming up to join this fight, but he is too late. And he's only level 5, so he wouldn't really be able to do too much in this. Diamond got the early level 6 because he was farming the jungle, and he took some XP in the mid lane, so he could go up early gank. I don't think Copenhagen was expecting him to be level 6 already, and that's why they kept pushing up. Well, that piercing arrow continues to do damage on Youngbook, but it is going to be the bottom lane pairing of Genja and Edward backing off to make some purchases, wards on towards the dragon, of course. That's something that Gambit do focus heavily on. We'll have to keep our eyes on that one. Blue buff was just giving it across the Kaltard in the mid lane. The same is going to happen to Alexic on Lulu in the mid lane. Don't think I'd ever say that. <laughs> Lulu in the mid lane. I think we should get used to it, especially if he managed to win this game and we actually see how strong Lulu can be. Right now, though, he's kind of struggling in the lane and Kaltard is just getting stronger and stronger as, as this game will go on. God help Solo Q after this match finishes. It's not the place I'd want to be right now because there's going to be Lulus everywhere. Yeah, Alex Hitch can do it. Well, not quite the same level. Whoa, mistake there. Alex Hitch just spotted it. Double Chalice was purchased there. I had to sell it quickly. Oh, you really spotted that one fast. Were you actually directly looking at the items? I just happened to be thinking about items. Talking about the items, the thing I noticed right now is the fact that Diamond has gone for more AP route. We saw him building you know, the Players Rune King and you know, more AD heavy before Nivellin. Now he's actually picked up AP as the first item. He might be going in for something like an early DFG. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't really switch across. Maybe DFG. I, I, I have no idea what build you go with on Lulu here. I mean, you talked about maybe in the themes early on, which is obviously what the Chalice will fill, fill into, but a rushing a DFG, is that a risk? Uh, and Lulu, sorry, I was talking about the Evelyn before. Oh, the DFG say, I thing. thought you were talking about No, no, no. Lulu, I was going to say rushing a DFG on Lulu. Okay. That would surprise me a lot. <laughs> that would surprise me as well. He wants to go for the Athens first, you know, it's, it's all he needs for the MR versus the, versus Kaltra. He gets cooldown reduction, he gets the mana he needs, and he gets some good base AP. Theref after that item, the question is, do we go Lich Bane or Death Cap? And if he does go Lich Bane, I'm actually looking very much forward to see what he can do. Oh, trade back and forward. Alex might be in trouble here. Kaltra will follow this one through. The E, of course, doing work. Slicing on towards Alex, but he just managed to land that glitter lance to keep him at bay. Amazing, looking to push on top lane. This could be a three-man pile on. Darian's already backing away from it though. That's going to be the tower going down. Tries to get straight on towards him with that cyclone, but he will back off. First tower for the wolves. First tower. Sorry, my voice cracked once in a while. Anyway, first tower gone down. They can now rotate, but smart move by Gambit. They spot the jungler top lane. Instantly, they go for the dragon. They know it will be uncontested. And Genji is actually staying bot lane just to farm, because they don't even need him. They know, that they know there's no chance Cobrang Wolves will contest this dragon. And the Danish in you getting excited about the wolves taking down that first tower, I'm sure. Dragon, though, for Gambit, of course, does trade off the objective. Oh, and limited mid lane. Alexic in trouble here. That's going to be a flash. Tibbers, not even a flash used. In fact, it's going to be Kautar getting on towards him. Has to use that wild growth. Will save himself. So, one ulti burn for another. And now they maybe want to try and shove down this lane. Tibbers could tank the turret, but no, backs off. Renekton in the bot lane had to blow his ultimate. Sadly, though, the hook from Edward didn't hit him. Diamond coming around just to secure off that middle turret. Darren also close by, and then they realize that Limited, I think they were looking for the dragon there. I don't think they even realized that Gamut had taken it, so they have no timer on that one right now. They're going to have a rough idea. Yeah, they had no vision, and at the same time, Alex didn't move from the mid lane, so there wasn't really anything giving it away, other than Edward was missing from the lane, but he could have come back to shop, so that's why they didn't expect the dragon actually to be gone. So we do see the lanes on the bottom lane matching up once again. Forgiven and Unlimited has got that BF Sword Bloodthirst almost completed by him. Meanwhile, we do see Genji. He went a very different route here. He has gone for that Bound Break Scepter. I had to go for the double door into the boots. Yeah, Genji has gone, you know, the I don't have enough money for BF Sword route. Yeah. And just save laning. And we see Diamond again closing in on Kaltar in the mid lane. Okay. Nope. Kaltar does get Polymorph, but they're not going to chase on through it instead. They will back off and... He's taking some damage. We see Amazing maybe also stepping in towards this mid lane. Maybe going to try and set up a gank. They realize Alex was low, which is why he's backing off. Touching back on the items from the AD carries, it's actually quite an issue for him that you now have a BF Sword on Lucian. He has a lot more damage to, to bring out, and Gambit will actually have to rely on maybe Diamond coming down, landing the chain from Genja, and then setting something up. Well, Spectral Wraith was picked up by Diamond, of course, and also Athens was taken by Alex. So expected items for those two. We'll see which way 
Darien goes in that top lane because it looks like he's going for the Hydra straight away. So the Hydra's for more basically split push and he wants to be able to constantly shove Youngblood down. He's level 9 to level 7 so he doesn't even care about Youngblood being there. There's no threat for him actually dying to him and if he can keep expanding this lead, keep shoving down the waves, he's gonna be the constant pressure against Copenhagen Wolves and this is what Darien loves to do. He wants to drag people up to him, up to gank him and then Gambit do something else on the map. But my issue with that, if Darien is gonna go head towards, get that damage, get the shove in, there's no one at the moment that would be able to stop Kowtide if he starts getting going. No, and that is an issue about Gambit's combo, also teamfight-wise. They don't really have too much. Oh, we see Rosie coming in. Chain of Corruption onto Forgiven and followed in by the hook, the lash. The box goes down, but it's going to be limited. They switch across. They want to get both targets. Forgiven's taken so low, might get away. No, the flash once again. Edward lashing, whipping out on towards him. And now Unlimited's going to be focused. Diamond's going to have to back away from this one, though. Hasn't got the damage to follow it up. May take a tower hit as well. He does. It's going to take him low. Unlimited can't follow through. But this was so smart by Gambit. We just talked about how they were behind the items in the bot lane. They call down the jungler. They use both fresh and can to set up an easy gank. Teleport in the mid lane. That's Darian coming down to make sure that middle tower is covered off. I'm not too sure whether he was needed there because Alex had already cleaned up the wave. It does give Youngbuck time to push on towards that free top lane. And Youngbuck just have to try and get all the farm and XP he can at this point because he is behind. He needs to catch up to this trundle so he can actually bully the trundle out and ever put the pressure, you know, on Copenhagen Wolves' side. The issue for him is there's teleport on, on Darren. He just used it, but it will be up later on and then he can try and set up plays with Gambit. Oh, both junglers desperately having to tank out the blue buff there. Both mid laners slow to react, but blue buffs have been given across them. 2,000 gold apparently is the advantage that the blue buff gives you, according to the, uh, the keen Reddit statisticians. We'll see if that makes any difference though, because as both is, both mid laners have picked it that up. How do we see the power rankings at the moment? They're up to level 10. Both are farmed pretty well. You can see Kaltard slightly ahead. How is it matching out so far in the first 10 levels? Well, Kale taking time bomb. We have seen it time and time again. If you do get to your late game point, you can just start one-shotting people. Her Q has a one-to-one -one AP ratio. So once you get to that point where you really can ditch out a lot of damage with your death cap, for instance, you can't really deal with it. And you have to either burst him down instantly or try and shove him out of the fight. And we know how Kumei Wolves fights. You know, they like to stay together as a team and they like to play very coordinated and very passive in the team fights. Gambit, the Lulu pick, I'm not sold on it yet. I need to see what he can actually do in the team fights and how Gambit plays with it. They do have the Lantern, the Pillar, and the Slow from, from, uh, from him, sorry, from Alex to set up some good kiting. Amazing was looking to go for a gank in that bottom line, but immediately Edward comes forward. And actually, I think he warded over the wall, actually. If we look across just to the left-hand side, you'd see there's a ward gone over the wall. Didn't put it in the tri-bush, because he knew there was a pink in the tri-bush. Instead, warded it further away. There it is, just on your screen there. Just outside of the range of the pink ward, so they will spot him coming in. He can still try and stealth in, but it will require Gambit to push up a lot more. And as long as they can keep the lane right here, they're safe. Oh, wow. Alex, it does get a kill. We'll check that out in a moment with the replay. But right now, the bottom lane is the focus. We can see Edward maybe thinking of going for something. Not going to happen. Diamond is coming down to that bottom. But it seems they will back away from that one. Yeah, they do have the lantern door on Edward. So they can set up a very easy game with Diamond like we saw before. Alex getting the, the kill in, in mid lane. He didn't even use his ultimate. So that would have been a straight up, I don't know, I'm not even sure how it burst him down too long. It had to be Kowtard sticking around in lane for just a little bit too long, yeah. maybe on low health. Kowtard must have completely underestimated the damage from Lulu, and just when we talk about how not sold on the Lulu pick yet, then he picks up a, like a free kill without even doing anything for it other than his ignite. Well, here's the replay, let's check this out. Yeah, he has to say, he was already low on the damage. He was low, you know, Alex chopped him in, and then he stayed here. Oh, the pixie was on him, he activated the Q, picked up the kill. Oh, that is... Yeah, and the, in all fairness, how often in solo queue would he have come up against this matchup? We'll get back to that in a moment. Diamond was waiting in the wings, maybe looking for it. He's not spotted out by the ward, I don't think. No, because that's not a vision. The pink has exactly. been cleared out. The pink has been cleared, so they have probably seen him clear it, and then he, you know, he went away, and then he moves back in. That's kind of the bait you can do. Dragon is up again, and he's starting it. No wards for Copenhagen Wolves in this area, so he, they don't even know he's starting it. He should be able to focus it down solo as well. Hasn't got any help at the moment. We'll see whether he does get any help at the moment. Nope, it's going to be a straight solo kill. Diamond, no problems. And Diamond's going this completely mixed item build again where he's going for some AD and some AP. He's now picked up a Hickstringer to try and shut down some of the burst from both Kautard and also Unlimited. Well, the Ravenous Hydra has also been picked up in that top lane by Darien, or the Tiamat building into it. 
as it is. And we can see in terms of farm, they are actually pretty close to two top laners, but it's the bottom lane we can see. Amazing was waiting in the wings, but I don't think they're going to go for anything here. They're going to have to tower dive. Yeah, they will have to tower dive it. And if you don't know where Evelyn is, there's no pink wards from Corbin and Wolves, so they have no idea where Diamond is. And if you do start a dive and he's there, you're pretty much going to give two or three kills to Gambit, and that can cost a lot in this game. So you don't really want to take the risk unless you know where Diamond is. Speedy reactions in that bottom lane, taking the lantern the second that Forgiven moved in to try and get some quick burst damage down on towards him. So, Bloodthirster was completed by Forgiven, but he hasn't backed off and he's lacking mobility when you look at Genja. He's lacking mobility, but that's also why Covenant Wolves is playing so passive. Every time something happens, you know, they're just moving backwards, they go up to see as they need, and then back off. The wards from them just got removed in this bush, so it's very scary for them actually to move forward. And Alex, he just keeps going for Kaltar. Yeah, he's really focusing on towards him, keeping the pressure down, but Kaltar's trying to give as good as he can get. But again, we see the burst that Alex has on Lulu. And that's a lot of burst, and the fact that he can put his E onto Kaltar and then Q him twice. That's, you know, you can't really dodge it when the pixie is already on you. So he has so much poke when he has this blue buff and solo cooldown. He's actually going for this. Intervention being used immediately by Kaltard. Will he time it wrong? That's the question. Alex, it should have the bonus now. Puts the wild growth down. Oh, is he going to land it. the last pixie? No, it's on him, but not quite going to be enough. Meanwhile, down the bottom lane, they're going to focus on towards Unlimited. Flashes out of it. Edward trying to get the lash on there. That's very low health on Genja. Alex, it's also very low. Must have gone for a trade. Young Buck Young came Buck in to support. In. Wow, so much action going on right now. Alex almost picked up the kill and we see Diamond he's staying bottling he wants to fight for this one he doesn't have his ultimate though Cyclone's available from Amazing, so they may try and go for that tower dive, which is why you see Diamond being so, so cautious. Edward needed to land that hook, me teleport. teleport coming in down the bottom, that's going to be Darian joining the fight. Cyclone was used, and Amazing, how's he going to get out of this one? It's going to be unlimited going down. Amazing's trying to get away from this one, he can't be enough. Pillar of Milk goes down, does lock him down. Amazing's in all sorts of trouble, that's going to trade back and forward. Look at the river though, Youngbuck coming down now. Can he get on towards Genja? He's going to chase on towards this one. Darian is also low, Darian doesn't care about Genja, but he may care about the Givens beating on him from behind, but instead he just walks away without any problems. Only Darian can. All right, so basically, everything starts with Unlimited going in with the Tibbers. Diamond is there for the counter gank. They pick up the kill, and then the till uh, sorry, Diamond comes in from behind. When actually Copenhagen will chase up, because Amazing went in there, got the kill. Teleport comes in from behind from Darian, sets everything up, you know, everyone is bot lane, Renekton is moving bot, the only one not there was actually Kautar and then Alex because he, you know, he had to recall. So much action going on and it's just counter gangs non-stop and everyone, like the junglers are just following each other around. I suddenly feel that Kautar is not enjoying that mid lane duo with uh, Alex it's there. At the moment, he seems to be losing out on it every time there's a trade, but he's going to be getting blue buff here, as will Alex in just a moment. Yeah, after the first few items for Lulu, she's having so much damage. Alex can't deal with, I mean, uh, Kautar can't deal with this at the moment. He had the, you know, the early game pressure, but now with the Fiends and almost a Lich being completed from Alex, he just can't do anything against him. And you can see again, he's putting that pressure back onto Kautar, takes the tower hit, doesn't care about that. It's that little speed boost. He does need to be careful if Amazing decides to join this fight, though. Yeah, Amazing can come in. He has his ultimate ready just in a few seconds. No flash, though, so Alex... Well, Alex doesn't have a flash. He's actually going for this one. He's going to go in. He's going to try and get on towards him. Cyclone will not be popped. Instead, Wild Growth bumps Amazing away. And Alex Hitch is close. This time, Diamond going to come and help him as well. But that was a perfect timed ultimate from Alex. It actually knocked Wukong away. So if he had started his ultimate, Alex might have been just out of range and he wouldn't have done anything because there was no flash at the moment for Amazing. Now, Youngbuck is going to go on towards Alex Hitch. The rest of the team are close by. Instead, just pops the shield on himself. Diamond again. He was just heading off to the Wolves and comes straight back. And now they have to defend this mid turret. Kale is there. Amazing is there. And Youngbuck is closing in. Darian's coming down the river as well. He's going to try and join this fight, but it is the Copenhagen Wolves putting the pressure on there. You see Diamond being a problem. Kaltar does take a tower hit, and again, Gambit defend out the middle turret. But this shield from Alex is, you know, they take, oh, fight bot lane. Chain of Corruption does land on towards Forgiven. We see the box coming out, but it's going to be Gambit Edwards that's going to have to run away from this one. The Limited trying to pull the pressure back, but look at this, Genja putting the calling down. No, it's going to be Forgiven. Who's going to win the fight? It will be Genja on towards the Limited now. The pressure, the hook, not going to land. But you see Diamond coming in around the side. He's got the damage. He just takes him down without any trouble. And Genja manages to pick up the kill almost 1v1 in the end. Forgiven, he flashed into Genja and kind of wasted it for no reason at all. He could have tried to flash away at least to, you know, stay safe. Another fight mid. Again, intervention used, wild growth used. Who's going to win out the duel this time around? It's going to be Kautar. That was tight. I don't even know what to say about this mid lane matchup because they just keep killing each other back and forth. Now we see a fight in the top. 
but I'm not sure what you're calling a fight, but I'm not sure how close it's gonna be. Young is just gonna walk away, doesn't need to pop Dominus. Standard top lane. Alright, so back to the mid lane one. They just keep taking kills back and forth on each other. And they're just so even in the farm as well. This mid lane matchup is so weird to watch, and I'm actually really enjoying it. Well, Young Buck again, very low this time. He may have to pop Dominus. Darwin happy to take a couple of tower hits, and look at it, he's just regenning more than he takes damage. But he's got to be careful because Kaltard is coming around the side. Young Buck trying to bait him into this one. It may well work. Dominus gets popped. In comes oh. Kaltard. Pillow does mean to cut him off the side, but the slow goes down. They should have enough, but Darian flashes away. Can he dice his way away from this one? Kaltard should close him down. One more hit will do it. There he is. Darren, as we know him, he likes to overextend. He doesn't really care if he's about to get ganked. Kaltard uses this. He goes up, picks a free kill. Getting a free kill on Kale is a huge deal. Especially right now when he's so close with Alex in the mid lane and they're just trading back and forth. Dragon, though, Gambit picked up the first two. They're actually setting up for this again. Double pink wards. No vision for Copenhagen Wolves in this dragon area. Is the dragon up, as you mentioned. Pink wards are all being put down. And again, amazing looking to go for Alex. If Cyclone is available, it's going to try and go for it. But Alex, look at that. Smelling it the moment he comes near. No ward coverage there. Just simply detected it. Then by the movements of Kaltard. Yeah, by the move. Kaltard went like a little bit too aggressive. So he smelled it out. Backed off. He does have both his flash and ultimate and Lulu though. So he will be fairly safe. But you kind of want to save them for this potential team fight at Dragon. Pink wards is going to get spotted out by Amazing. Wasn't quite sure whether he'd see that one. And then he does. Take it down, no problem there. 30 gold given. Diamond with that red buff again. It's Alex Hicks. They're going to focus on it. Trying to drive him, trying to take him low. But I feel like every time they have this trade, Alex comes out on top. Well, they want to force a lot of his mana away as well because Lulu is very mana hungry. And they actually started the fight down here. And they can see it's amazing. They tried to start out the dragon. The cyclone was popped. Is it going to be enough? Because you can see Alex Hicks joining the party. That's going to be a great turn of corruption. But Genja with the wild growth on him should be safe. Amazing taken low. He's going to get dropped down. Edward comes in. He flashes away. Kaltar's the next focus. Nothing he can do about it. Alex is picking up another kill. Can they land the glitter lands on towards him? Edward's going to give chase here. There is a tower up. They've got to be very careful. Alex is really getting taken low there. Darian just quickly bullying him out, forcing them away. Alex will be saved. And a very messy engage from here from Copenhagen Wolves. They got touch on from both sides. Lucian wasn't even in the fight because Edward moved up together with Genja and they kind of collapsed on them with Alex and Diamond coming from behind and also Darian coming in. So it's a bit of a messy fight for Copenhagen Wolves and it's definitely not the one they wanted to take. It's another trade and another dragon for Gambit, which means they continue to get that giant advantage. 7,000 gold now, still in the lane phase, I feel here. It's been a very long lane phase considering they took that tower down in the top so early on, but it is Gambit that are ahead with nine kills to three. But try and notice the item builds from Gambit at this point. They're going full on magic resist. They really want to make sure that Alex, I mean Kaltard, is not able to kill anyone with his burst. They don't even care about the fact that Wukong, Renekton and Lucian are all physical damage. It might actually end up hurting them in the end. Well, they're going to try and push this middle turret. Alex Hitch is going to come around too late though to defend it. And Glidlands just cleaning out that wave and just knocking it down. And as it is... Oh, Darian again. Pinged out. I think they're going to try and collapse on towards him, but he should be able to walk. No, he was going towards the blue. That may well have been his life, though. He's going to get caught out, stunned by Young, but can the rest of the team close in? No, he's just going to pop that and run away. And this time he managed to get out. He didn't have his flash. And meanwhile, Genji and Edward just putting so much pressure on the spot lane. They're actually winning it so far. The last two, two fight they had, Genji picked up the kill on Forgiven. So, so far, this virus pick is actually working. And Genja purposely leaving that tower up with one last hit so it would take down those last three minions. Clever play from Gambit as Lucian's always. And it does mean the turret will go down. So Gambit pushing along the bottom lane. There's three members here. Alex is just lingering around that jungle area. Now maybe going to go towards the middle. And one thing we have to give Gambit a lot of credit for is the fact we talked about how Alex needs the assassins to know roam around the map and set up kills. Right now, the bot lane and the top lane and Diamond Prox has actually been winning by themselves. They didn't need Alex to make plays. Alex has just been in the mid lane, fighting with Kaltar back and forth. So very strong play overall, especially from the bot lane and also the jungle from Gambit. And you know, we've, we've talked about Diamond Prox so many times throughout the years of League of Legends. And again, he's 304. Evelyn working out. Nobody else is picking Evelyn right now. He's the only one that's going back with it, just like he did with Lee Sin way ago, just like he did with Gangplank, if I remember of all things in Shivana. Again, he just figures out builds. Yeah, and well, he's also the only one who would ever think of this build. Look at it. He's going towards something like Randuins, maybe Spirit Visit or Banshees. Also, he has, you know, the starting build for Hourglass, and also he has a Hex Drink. Nobody ever thinks of a build like this. It's so hybrid, it's both tanky and damage-wise, and it's working out for him. Just a lot of solo queue games maybe that's worked in towards this one. We did hear about their solo queue actions, their exploits, 
Five members of Gamut here closing in on towards the middle lane turret. The Wolves are responding. Darian just waiting for someone to come around the side, but I feel Gambit may pull him away from the tower here. And we'll see how much Gambit's combo can actually do. Darian getting or catching out Youngbug in the back. Not much happening. It is the tank trade. But I'm really looking forward to see how much Gambit can do with this combo. Will they take like a straight on 5v5 and try and burst down one? And how much damage is this Lich Bane actually doing on Alex? And of course, Gambit, every time they keep pressure on, they do manage to start taking some jungle resources. The red buff will be picked up by Forgiven No, so that's going to be locked away. Genja completely left the lane once again. No surprise, it's something we always see from Gambit. He's just going to push out that bottom lane. And Copenhagen Wars, they're going to try and capitalize on this. They're pushing through the mid. Yeah, they want to try and set something up while Genja is gone. At the same time, Darian also went out of sight. So they want to, you know, pressure where they can and try and get back some gold. They are continuing to push. Genja now coming up. Oh, there. look at Diamond from behind. Diamond's going to come around. Remember, if he can land that big stun, he's going to get caught out. Youngbook just keeping him at bay. But look at that. He feels he's got the damage to come around. In comes Chain of Corruption. Doesn't Miss. land. It's a venture missing as well. Piercing Arrow not doing the damage. And that's a great cyclone coming out from Amazing. But have they got the damage? It's going to be Youngbook being taken down by Genja. The pressure on towards it. Kaldar's going to get dropped by Alexic. They're going to continue to chase, pushing on towards that tower. And again, the Piercing Arrow forcing the Wolves away. And the box from Edward right here prevented any movement from Copenhagen Wolves. Amazing went in, popped his ultimate, but nobody could follow. Youngbo was already low and he tried to get back in, but he couldn't even move. So much slower come down from Gambit. Both Varus has to slow, you have to slow on Trundle, you have to slow on the box from, from Edward, and also you have Alex with his Q doing so much, you know, to reduce your movement speed. So Gambit right now, just making sure Copenhagen Wolves can even move in these fights. Well, they brute force their way in towards the one middle turret. Can they take the inner turret down? It looks like they will. This is going to be an easy pickup for Gambit. And wow, just like that, Copenhagen Wolves lose themselves the entire vision of the mid lane. And just out of respect for Diamond, obviously Evelyn also has a slow. So I guess you have five champions providing, you know, slow. Not too much direct hard CC, but more the fact that they can just make sure Copenhagen Wolves can never reach them in these fights and always move a little bit backwards, take a kill when they need it. And that was this fight they won with a missed chain of corruption. Yeah, and, but also the fact that they didn't have the vision at the side, so they were focused so much on the front four of Gambit, they completely ignored the AD carry at the side. Genja, who now has himself a Bloodthirster Phantom Meta and a Guardian Angel, doing the damage from the side for free. Yeah, pretty much just, they didn't even touch him, because Amazing went for both Edward and, and Alex in the back line. So again, you just sh shot a wave, and then we have to touch a, touch a little bit about Youngbox. He's actually very squishy at the moment. He doesn't have any MR to really, except for the Hexstringer, to really prevent some of the damage coming in. So he got taken low so early and couldn't actually do anything in the fight. Wave clear on the bottom from Darien. Now with that Ravenous Hide complete, he is very fast indeed. He's just farming out. Spirit Passage picked up. Randy and Zoma may well be following. Genji's going on the hunt here, looking for kills. It's a champion that he's very comfortable on. You know, we wondered about who we would go with, but at 2-0-7, Varus is not a bad choice for him so far. No, I mean, the Varus have worked out perfectly, especially because when they needed help in the lane, Diamond moved down and they picked up the kill they needed. So he went back, bought a BF sword, and all of a sudden he was actually back in the lane and stronger than Forgiven. Well, they may oh. try and engage onto Edward here. Luckily, for luckily for the Copenhagen Wolves, they didn't go all in because I'm not sure whether they realized all five members of Gambit were there. Diamond acting as his little stealth assassin, checking out the side there, and he may well try and come around the side. Gambit going to force in. It's a flash. Dibbers on towards Alex Inch. Alex Inch dropped like you wouldn't believe it there. Now Genja's going to be the focus. They throw out the lantern. Is he going to take it? Darian taking so low. This is a great fight by the Copenhagen Wolves. They've got to be careful chasing on towards this one. Gambit are going to run away from it. They should be safe. Oh, with that young going to go in the hook. Young might get taken down before the rest of the team come in. But the calling beats him down onto a diamond. Diamond now running away. Amazing trying to lock on towards him. Has to take the lantern to back off. And Gambit. Oh, very close trade. They may lose the dragon. They may lose, or will they actually stay and try and fight for this one? They do have four people alive still, and Youngbug is gone. It is 4v4. Will they back out of fight? Diamond thinking about going in, but it's too dangerous to try and go for that engage. And the Copenhagen Wolves, successful tower defense, taking Alex very quickly, picking up a dragon. And this time, Copenhagen Wolves managed to land a CC they needed onto Alex, instantly shutting him down. He couldn't even ultimate himself. So this is what you need to do on their side. You need to flash tippers, or you need to Wukong to stealth him from behind, and just instantly hit the back line, back line of Gambit. Don't let them poke you, and don't let them you know, get all the slows on you and start kiting you. If Comrade Wolves to keep doing this, they can actually get back in the game, especially because they have Kale, who just gets stronger and stronger. Wouldn't be surprised to see some Banshee's Veils suddenly start appearing on Gambit either after that. 
engaged. They're realizing the dangerous position they're in. Rabadon's death cap will be next for Alex Sitzer, so we'll see where he goes after that. And Kenya has gone with his trademark Garden Angel third item build. It's very smart against this combo from Copenhagen Balls, because as we talked about in the champs, like, they have so much to actually get to him. If he should get caught out, he has a Garden Angel to help him out, you know, to, to stay alive a little bit longer. Or like, at least get alive again, to stay alive a little bit longer. Well, two Randian Zomans have been picked up now. We talked about the magic resist that was picked up earlier by Gamut. They have started to respect the damage that can come out from Youngbook Amazing and Forgiven. So double Randian Zoman picked up by the two mid top laner and jungler. Yeah, they've instantly gone for your double Randuins and also armor onto, onto Edward. So as soon as they noticed the fact they pretty much only had MR, they just went back and from there on only bought armor. It's like, again, it's very smart and we like I like this way of Gamble playing. They want to be as tanky as possible, not this full-on damage mode. It's more, you know, stay alive in the fight and just win by out-sustaining the enemy. 32 minutes gone in this game. You can see, of course, Gamble with that lead that they've developed slowly but surely throughout the lane phase. And as we've moved into these team fight situations, they are struggling. And we talked about this, that they're kind of... They're lacking a little with the initial aid. Of course, Darian could be the one that runs in there. Diamond's always going to be waiting for someone to engage. Genja's always waiting for someone to engage. And technically, Alex is always waiting for someone to engage. Yeah, Gambit needs to flank around to actually get a proper engage, or they need to land a chain of corruption from, from Genja. But that requires Copenhagen Wolves to stay very you know, close together for him to actually get multiple people. If you only hit like Youngbug, it doesn't really do too much. So right now, though, Diamond has been doing a great job of coming around the enemy and trying to set something up. Genja trying to bait out something there as well with the ward. Oh, the nice. pillar being put down, Young, but just going to get focused on me. He is back to way, Pissing Arrow, not going to find its target. So again, will be Gambit just bullying out the mid lane, just trying to keep the farm, keep the pressure on. Always in the Copenhagen Wolves jungle, and keeping the Copenhagen Wolves guessing, but they're not separating, they're staying together. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves don't want to take any chance of being caught by this Evelyn, and then whoever else is there from Gambit's side to, to kill them, and then Make, give uh, Gambit the chance to either push down a turret or go for a Baron. And the moment Diamond shows himself down the bottom, you can see the Wolf pushing up that mid lane. Pillar doing its job there from Darien. Youngbook has managed to single out Genja, but really not doing a great deal to focus on towards him. Flash Tippers is not available either. You can see no flash on Unlimited just at the moment. The cooling will be used, but Darien just absorbing the whole thing. It almost healed him, that calling. It did no damage onto Darien. We did see, however, the poke from Genja took 35% off Unlimited health instantly by one Q, so it's a very scary poke he got. And combine that with the Lulu poke, you're actually in for a very bad one if you get poked too much. Mm, with that cooling down, getting a bit currently, are going to start Baron, but they are There's on top of a ward. This is a dangerous situation for Gambit. They do have, of course, Kautar coming in, focusing on Alex Itch there. He's going to back away, but Alex is taking low already. This is danger time for Gambit. And Wukong ultimate around this Dragon Pit, he can, at the Baron Pit, he can hit a lot of targets and, you know, build up the whole fight. Alex, he has no healing right now, so he kind of needs to back off and then come back into the Baron if they want to keep doing it. The Wolves trying to push the situation here. They could go for this mid lane turret. They know that Gambit completely out of position and that he's going to be forgiven. And uh, Youngbuck pushing in towards it. Kautov with him. They should be able to take down this inner turret if if Youngbuck chooses to tank it out. Instead, they're going to go try and go for the kill instead. That's going to be the stun on Darien. That means Tibbus is going to go down with no stun with it. And Unlimited already taken low. Darien tanking out the entire team. Youngbuck tries to do the same. You can see Wild Growth being popped out there. Darien will go down. Edward also taking low. They're going to focus in. Diamond will get down. Unlimited are on the side there as well. Youngbuck is going to get Darien down. Genja though, he's going to pursue. Is he going to be able to land that? Chain of Corruption was missed already. And they are not going to back away. It's going to be another one for one. They trade one for one, but Gambit here, they try to close in from, again, flanking from the side and set something up. Copenhagen Wolves, they backed off and they collapsed onto Darren and Diamond. And, you know, got him so low, he couldn't stay in the fight, he actually ended up dying. And that meant Gambit could only take one kill and then had to back out. Well, our bottom lane is a giant wave beating on towards the tower. You can see that's actually all going to waste at the moment. Nobody from the Wolves daring go down there because they know that, obviously, we've already seen Gambit pushing towards that Baron. The fact that Darren is dead means they probably won't go for it, but that's a lot of gold being wasted down there. It's a lot of gold wasted, and Copenhagen Wolves have the issue that if they shove over lane, Darren can go there to farm it, and he has his teleport and can always move around. So if he decides to start some split pushing now, Gambit maybe wait a little bit with pushing up, they can actually get some pressure on the map. Copenhagen Wolves, though, they've just been staying together all the time. They don't want to get caught. They just want to farm up, because they know the late game with the Kale. Also, Lucian is very strong late game. They have so much, you know, damage and, and utility to offer. And speaking of that, Forgiven has just been back to get himself that Trinity Force, so his damage will have stepped up somewhat on the cooling. We'll see whether it just massages the shoulders of Darien, because he didn't really do a lot in the last engagement. Unlimited clearing out that ward with the uh, Sweeper, which 
As you can see, a number of members have picked up three on the Copenhagen Wall sweeping lenses and two for Gambit. I'm a bit surprised that uh, Youngbok actually finishes play the Run King. It's mainly one you want to use for the 1v1 fights in, in the lanes. And that's not really going on right now. He needs to be full tank, and he could just have kept the Cutlass for now and just, you know, get some MR because right now he's actually getting chunked quite hard before every fight starts. He's definitely the, the focus, certainly, of Gambit when they have quite the burst damage just yet to take him down as quick as they'd like. Dragon is up, but nobody seems to be thinking of that. As I mentioned that, the Wolves head straight down there. Now, the only reason I can see him building, just going back to the Red Rouge King, is trying to stop some of all this kiting from, uh, from Gambit's side. If he can, oh, we see fight going on in mid. Diamond getting focused by Kautar. The Dragon has been picked up. Darien was not anywhere near that. The, the moment he went up the top, Copenhagen Wolves quickly reacted, went straight for Dragon. It was a smart move. They pick up a lot of gold here in the late game with the Dragon. It gets more and more the longer in the game you get. So they actually get quite a good chunk. And again, it just works for him to constantly go towards the late game. And right now, Gambit don't really know what to do because they can't flank Copenhagen Wolves when they're staying this far back. Ward coverage being cleared with the pink wards as well. Sweeping lens was available and instead they pinked out the blue. So they will get themselves more vision around that Baron. This is what it's all about right now. If Gambit try and start this off again, which I'm not sure if they will, is it a dangerous time? Because, I mean, you've got the Flash Tibbers, the Cyclone, there's so much in there that Wolves could disrupt this fight. Yeah, Gambit doesn't have the lineup to actually start the Baron because they want to make sure they're in the open where they can kite Copenhagen Wolves. They don't want to get engaged on in like a small area. Everyone gets CC'd and then they just get taken down because the direct damage from Gambit is not very strong. They need these long fights and that's why they can't really start this as long as Copenhagen Wolves is nearby. Well, Flash is available in a moment for Unlimited, which means Tibbers could well be on the scene very quickly. This could be it. Oh, they're going to go engage in Youngwood's going to find oh. him just at the top of the screen though. Cyclone, Tibbers, everything thrown down, which means Edward and Diamond. Diamond having to use that Zonya's Hourglass. Will he be able to get away? Wild growth is going to be used. But you can see the culling doing its work. Diamond is going to be able to back away. And this is a back and forth fight. Now they're going to focus on the limited. Gen just got the damage, but hasn't got the focus instead. They're going to split apart. The Copenhagen Wall's backing away. Can they find the two in the bush? Genja surely should do. And they're going to actually head them off. Darien, is he going to come around? Yes, he is. That's going to be a pillar straight in the face of Amazing any moment now. There it is. Have they got a chase now? Can they catch on towards Kautar? They will manage to get the slowdown, but he's going to speed himself up instead. They could turn it around. Four members of the Copenhagen Wolves come back in. Now he gets focused and dropped like a stone. Kautar now onto Darien. Has got the slow. Good volley of arrows from Genja will slow them down. But Diamond, he's Roy joined the fight. They can turn his back around here. He's gonna go in towards him. Goes on towards him limited. He's gonna be the focus target. Kautard with the intervention trying to stop off. Genja doing the damage. Jungwood tries to come back around the side, but Darius doing work. Taking down Amazing. Now Unlimited is running for it. Pierce and Arrow gonna get charged up any second by Genja. Should be able to chase on this one. Volley not enough to take him down. And they back off. Well, what an extended fight. And both teams right now, they just keep overextending and get punished by the other team. First, it's Gambit who chases down. Very good flash by Kyle Todd, actually dodging the slow from Lulu. And then, you know, staying alive more. We see Teleport coming in. They might want to start. They, they can actually take this Baron because Copenhagen Wolves is very far away. But Gambit is the only one nearby. And he's completely oom. He cannot team fight at the moment. Making full use of Teleport. Darian tanking out that Baron. No problems, Gambit. Once again, in control. But... As the Wolves have proven, when in open ground, they actually can trade pretty well with Gambit, despite being almost 10,000 gold behind. Yeah, they actually got the perfect engage in the fight, because forgiven, I mean, Amazing managed to land his ultimate on two people and just instantly take them down. However, we do see some of the bad decision-making from Copenhagen Wolves again. Where Gambit uh, was chasing them down, they picked up a kill, they could just say that's fine enough. They decided to chase it, and Diamond came up, and actually, pretty much like watching the Fnatic game again, got punished for it, and then give the Baron to the enemy team completely uncontested. Big danger signs now, the fact that Genja has completed and picked up the Infinity Edge, which will add a giant chunk to that damage. The Piercing Arrow is going to hurt, that's for sure, no matter who the tank is. Kautard, well, he is also building up pretty strongly, but again, he's only at three, well, technically four items with the Home Guard boots on Sorcerer's boots as well, but he's still got Torn's Ring in his bag, along with the Crystalline Flask. <laughs> along with the Flask, I would actually like to see him sell it, maybe pick up a few wards. It could help them a lot right here, where Gamut is kind of put on the siege. He is having a lot of damage though, but he's gonna need his Void Staff to really break through. There's a lot of MR on Gambit's side. Once he picks that one up, we're really gonna see the strong kill though. Diamond Box, however, 4, 0, and 8. He's so strong, he's tanky, he has damage, and every time he's there for the fight, it's just issues for Copenhagen Wolves. This is 
see a punch as well be picked up by Edward, noticing that he is the man in the front there, throwing out those hooks. Terrian dancing on the steps of Copenhagen Wolves. Terrian, like you know him, and he's really hit the point right now where he's he's having the main items he needs, and he's going to be this big tanky troll that's going to be so hard to take down because he's going to steal some of the tanky stats from either Amazing or Youngborg and just get even harder to kill, and he can even tank the turret. Yeah, you can see a rotation, I believe, down towards his bottom turret. Diamond thinking about going down there, he should just go in as that wave closes in, and he'll be able to take down this inner turret without any issues. The only risky part for him doing this is the hard engage on Copenhagen Wolf side. They need to, you know, punish Gamble right here. They do spot, oh, he did, don't spot him yet, I think, because he's doing the goal. Now they will see him, will they try and engage him mid? Well, they see that he's going to take that turret down, they are going to try and clear the wave out. You can see they look looking to try and chase it, but again, you see. Glitter lance from Alex, it's slowing the entire team. And very smart play by Gambit. As soon as uh, Diamond is spotted, the rest of the team moves backwards and makes sure that they can't get engaged on. Copenhagen Wolves really wanted to go though. We do see KL going down towards the bottom lane. Kalta trying to deal with that giant wave, which means the Gambit are going to focus on towards that tower. They don't get enough damage down. It is a giant troll in the form of Darian in the mid lane with that wild growth on him. But they don't put damage on the turret. They don't really get it here, but they do blow at least some of the poke and ultimate from Copenhagen Wolves. The calling was used here. So now they'll try and go for this. They're going to go in towards it. Kaltar's trying to beat them off. Jungbuk goes in, but look at the damage on him already. Wow. Alex Inch gets dropped. A great cyclone coming out from Amazing with the intervention bouncing on towards him. But have they got the damage to follow it through? Jungbuk still going to take it low. Will back off just about in time. Kaltar, you can't chase a kill. You've got to be careful. Once that Q is back up, he should be able to pop someone. But it is Gambit once again pushing in. Is this a mistake? It can be very risky before this, but there is home guard on, on Youngbox, so he can kind of go back, go in for the fight. Gambit wisely enough though, they back off, they lose a member once again. Every time Covering Wolves can hit Alex with some of the CC, they just take him down instantly, and he's not doing anything in the fights. If they can keep doing this, they can keep falling their way back in the game, and that's definitely the plan for them. I'm going to think a little bit more damage maybe on Copenhagen Wolves. That could have been a disastrous fight for Gambit because bear in mind they had Baron on there. They did pop Alex in very quick and it was a great cyclone catching all of Gambit. Yeah, as long as Copenhagen Wolves are hitting all these engages, they're actually winning the fight. And they've been doing this before in the game as well. It's not the first time we see Copenhagen Wolves win a fight. Is it too late though? They're still 10k behind, but the longer you extend the game, the less the goal actually means because more and more people will complete the six items and you're gonna hit the point where it doesn't even matter your 20k goal behind because everyone has what they need. Well, Guardian Angels was picked up as well by Darian. Vanchis Vale, of course, completed a while ago by Edward, who's now got the talisman completed as well. So they have that speed to get away from perhaps amazing cyclone or flash tips. Now, Genya hasn't picked up a Last Whisper. He's gone for damage items. He's got an Angel, but no Last Whisper yet. He might go back and pick it up now, actually. But he's uh, been lagging a bit of damage from the tanks, at least, and they haven't really been able to at least take down focus. See if I partner. Darian getting focused. Alex Inch is going to turn around. Has to use the wild growth on himself to back away the tower. Still standing, doing damage on Young, but they're not too worried about it. But it's got to be careful, because coming down that river is a very scary diamond prox. 4 a 0 8 He's got the damage. He's got the speed. Can he catch up towards him? No, they're going to all back off. And Copenhagen Wolves used the talisman to back off. They try to get a pig on Darian, but he's very hard to kill. We've seen this before. Wisely not. Talisman away. Don't even take a chance with Diamond coming from the side. So Forgiven wasn't in that fight. He made face-to-face -face with Diamond Brooks. That's a very scary face check on the push there. Yeah, you really don't want to face check Diamond at this point. And they are really lacking some ward coverage on Copenhagen both sides. They can never really move out from the lane unless they move five together. That's also why they've been doing it so far. They do have to give credit to, Ga to Gambit though. They've been good at shutting down the vision from Copenhagen both sides and make sure that they know exactly where they are at all times. Piercing arrow is being thrown out, and once again it's Gambit trying to siege the front door of Copenhagen Wolves. But this time without the Baron. It didn't work so well last time with the Baron buff. They're trying it again. Without the Baron, but with the last Wisp on Genja. Youngberg just survived the fight yet before. This time though, he won't be able to do the same because Genja's gonna have a lot of damage on the tanks, and it's gonna be very hard for Copenhagen Wolves to go in unless they can instantly pop someone. And Alex Hitch this time around staying very far back in the fight as you can see backing away the moment they came clear. Piercing arrows and glitter lances trying to flash out there, trying to land the damage, trying to poke down Kaltard maybe, trying to get some sort of poke on towards him. But as it is, Copenhagen Wolves doing a very good job of sidestepping that damage. Diamond is backing off, he's going to clear out that bottom wave. You can see Genja, I think he's going to start stepping off towards that top wave. Maybe, maybe think Gambit is going to step away from this and they realize that he can't see him. They can actually stay mid though because the wave will push by itself top lane. They can ignore the bottom lane for now if they choose to or they can just 
just back off as a whole team, go down and shove it out. But if this do stay mid now, they can later on rotate to the top lane because the wave is going to hit the turret, and it's an outer turret, so it's going to be very hard for Wolves to actually defend it. I think Ward found from Genji there. Look at Copenhagen Wolves, they're rushing out in this one, maybe trying to catch him out instead. Everybody from Gambit back in a way. Notice how they're just giving the full wave to Kautar pretty much every time. Everyone else backs away. Forgiven, he has pretty much his items right now. So they just want to make sure that Alex constantly gets farmed and constantly gets stronger. He's picked up his Void Star. He's going to really start to hurt, even on Darien at this point. Darien, who only really has the Spirit Passage and Guardian Angel for that magic resist. But of course, he'll be able to chomp away those stats from. It's probably Young Buck as soon as he uh, pops out, who himself just got that Negatron cloak. We talked about how he was lacking in that department. Looks like a bench, uh, Guardian Angel may be coming out for himself. And now we see the Baron is back up. We see Gambit try and go for this again, set up the fight. It didn't work too well before for them, because every time they actually tried to start it, Covenant Wolves was there, set up the fight. We have to touch on a little, bit, a little thing. They've been using the ultimate from Kale and Renekton the last few fights. If Gambit can keep doing this, you know, forcing the ultimate on him and then backing out a little bit, they can go back in and take it. Pretty much a free kill. Yeah, invisible Baron being taken down, which from side we see the full vision here. Copenhagen Wolves coming in for this one. Edward trying to run interference along with Darien. They are going to put the box down. They will take the Baron just before they get close. Cyclone comes in, but the damage is very spread out. Youngbook's going to dive in. Have they got enough? No, Genji's just doing work on the side. That's going to be one down. But Amazing's oh. in trouble. Look at the pop coming out from Genji. He's just destroying the opponents. Youngbook's running for his life. They don't care. They're switching back on towards Kautan. He gets taken down by Alex Hitch. And now Forgiven is running away. Gambit, get the Baron, and three kills. To get the Baron, Covenant Wolves was very slow to react because Forgiven was far away. They didn't want to go in with four people. And we have to give credit to, oh, who's almost coming in. Forgiven having to use the flash. He would have been caught out by that hook as well. And now the Copenhagen Wolves have got to back away from this one. They're going to be able to tank that turret down. It's actually Gendra, I believe, that's tanking out the turret as well. But look at the shields being thrown at him. Just covering him off, no problem. That's the inhibitor going down. And Gendra, in the last fight, he was just tanking everything. I think Gambit, they may be able to finish this one off. They're going to keep on pushing through. The spawn time is, of course, still at 30 seconds. Youngbook comes in. Darien's taking a lot of damage from that turret. Forgiven doing work on him. But again, just that regen coming out. That's a piercing arrow. Sniping out Youngbook. Diamond doing work. The hook up Forgiven. He's in trouble. He's going to run away from this one. The pillar burned down. The Nexus turret's been burned. Forgiven trying to take down Darien. But he just chomps his way through it. Genja gets himself another kill. And Gambit game and take the game go three wins on the trot and wow Genji at this game every single team fight once we got to the late game point he was so strong the last fight he just tanked everything that Copenhagen was throwing him but because it was only amazing in Youngbug they couldn't take him down with his guard angel and he just did so much damage and he he brings up the virus pick and he just goes crazy mode on him You've got to give it to the Copenhagen Wolves though. Again, despite losing the lane phase pretty heavily, really they did manage to hold on. They've got this knack of just staying in the fight. Despite being 10,000 gold behind in those team fights, they were giving Gambit a good run for the money. They were definitely giving him a good run. I mean, they just stayed together as a group. They didn't want to risk anything. And every time Gambit tried to push, they were there to shove it back. They did try and stop the first round. The second one though, they were too late for it. They didn't react in time. Gambit got to the Baron and then the fight started and that's the worst scenario you can get in because you're actually going in for nothing more or less. They could maybe have backed out, try to defend for another 10 minutes. Yeah, and the damage of course coming out, take that Baron down so quickly. You've got to talk about some of the big players there. Uh, but Genja, 7-0-8, 4-0-12 for Diamond as well at the end of that game. Some great plays and again another fantastic Evelyn coming out from Diamond. Fantastic Evelyn, he pretty much carried the whole, the whole early game from, from Gambit. Wherever he went, there was kills, he counted the gang.